The only way unhappy people can stay in your life is when you focus on their unhappiness. Thank you to the person who was up here because she definitely set the scene. I am a mother of two beautiful boys. Yeah. One is seven and one is five. And I would like to be a mom that does not need them to come on a cruise to sit up on this chair saying anything but their mom helped them soar. And I... Give us a clear understanding of what you're getting at there. Okay. My son has been diagnosed with ADD. And Good. Good? Okay. Because this is a boring world that doesn't move nearly as fast as his energy does. And the world will keep up with him, but it's not a good idea to keep asking him to slow down. So I totally agree with you. Then you would be right. I thought so. <laughs> I hope my husband's listening very hard to this. She's right. So <laughs> We've traveled 28 hours for me to ask that question from South Africa. You were a little hard to get up here. I so, my guidance system says, I don't like this diagnosis. I, 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 well, who's giving it? Did they tattoo it on his forehead or something? So what? A lot of people call a lot of people a lot of things. Why are you making such a big thing about this? So, the school yeah. that he's, the, the schooling system that we are in, yeah. makes parents have to make a decision about their children. Um, so he has this diagnosis and then you have to make a decision, are you going to medicate this child or you need to put them into a non-mainstream school. Do you have the option of giving speed to the teachers? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Well, no, it's not this particular school. But um, when they told us that he's ADD, through behavioral analysis and through some tests. What they described sounded just like me. And so I thought, okay, well then I must have had ADD my whole life and yet I'm still okay. This is why this conversation is such a good one to have. So just relax and enjoy this a little bit and then we'll talk specifically about what we would do. Contrast helps you to decide. And there is a relativity in every moment, in other words, something in relationship to something is the only way that you can come to any awareness of, in other words, that's how you focus awarenesses, is by comparative experiences. When someone is having an experience, the student, the child, bumping up against a teacher or a group of teachers or a system, it's all right, but who have selfishly established guidelines in order to accomplish conditions that give them the easiest path. It's much easier if you're not up to speed with someone to slow them down. That's what Esther occasionally would say to us, Abraham, I know that I'm in a funk, I'm not in a very good place, and I can't seem to jump the track or get myself up to speed with you, so just join me here in this lower vibration for just a little while until I catch my balance. And she didn't get any satisfaction from that because we cannot, we will not, we are not lowering our vibration. She must make her vibration higher. She has to release the resistance. We cannot add resistance to the pot. We want you to feel this happen to you in a very strong way. Your child's inner being will not add resistance to the pot in order to slow him down. But think about all of the people who surround you. You want your children to be quiet or you want someone to be different than they are. It's a very conditional life that most people are living. And so most teachers want behavior more than they want eagerness and fascination and learning. So a teacher who wants to medicate a very interested child is a teacher who doesn't want to be up to speed with their ability to learn. But we want to let this teacher off the hook too because we want this child to be able to find vibrational harmony with his inner being, not with his teacher. 
with his inner being, not with his mother or with his father. Everyone would benefit if the system that is surrounding them would call them out and demand that they be different than they are able to be because at an early age, they might have a chance of reaching for the relativity between their inner being and their source rather than trying to find relativity between things and situations and people who are going slower. Did that register with you? Mm. In other words, everything is relative and we want all of you to seek relativity. That's what we've been saying is vibrational equivalency with your inner being and the energy of your inner being rather than with those that are going. In other words, there are hateful people all over the planet. We don't want you to lower yourself so that they will understand you better. Would a teacher say your son is too loving and we are too hateful. We need to torture him a little. It's the same conversation. He's much too happy and we are much too miserable. So we need to do something that makes him a little less joyful. This is the same conversation. And so to medicate is to slow your ability to receive. We're talking to you all day long about getting into vibrational alignment with who you are and looking for positive aspects and doing whatever you can to get your vibration moving at the speed of life. And someone says, oh, well, let's just medicate you. What craziness is that? So I can't create for him, which I, which I struggle with. I don't understand parenting. I get to be, I understand how to be happy and how to be joyful. You don't have to understand parenting. Understand his inner being. Understand his quest for alignment. Because any frustration he shows is always when someone's trying to slow him down to a pace that is not natural to him. The best that any of us can do, whether we are non-physical teachers who are adoring our physical students or whether you are a physical mother adoring your physical son, the best that any of us can do for any other is to tune in to our joyful thought when we are holding them as our object of attention. And so to worry about him is not a good idea. And to get him his teacher is not a good idea. We are not condemning anyone. We're just explaining the process of this. You could say to the school, you could say to someone who was ready to hear some of the things that we have said to you, but much of it would be misunderstood because they don't mean to be detrimental in their seeking of a conditional world. If you were a teacher on fire about new thought and on fire about your understanding of the laws of the universe and the expansion of thought, and you had an unusual student in your class who was reaching eagerly in most moments and you recognized that eagerness and you lined up with it. That could be one of the most satisfying encounters that you ever have with a student. But if you are tired and if you just want them to behave and if rather than them connecting with new thought and new discovery, if that's not your quest, if instead your quest is, let's just get through the day with as little trouble as possible, then you're looking for something different in your students. And the more compliant they are, the more you like them and the more you reward them. And it is a true thing that your physical world does reward you for your mediocrity. Your physical world will reward you for your patience and for your behavior, for your good behavior. And by good behavior, they usually mean anything that doesn't make any trouble for me. But when you realize that the eagerness with which you have all come forth, and it shows up in the little ones most of all, Esther knows that the children should not be running down the hallways, but every time she hears it, she thinks, go, 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 go. She can hear them thundering this way and thundering that way and thundering this way and thundering that way and thundering this way and thundering that way. And she would never be the one to rat them out because she wants their exuberance for life to be allowed as much as is possible, you see. So we're not suggesting that you reform this school. That would be a lot of trains to turn around. We are suggesting that you do only one thing, and that is when you think about your child, think a thought that feels good. In fact, 
our strongest encouragement to parents is talk to your children as much as you possibly can, but only when you feel good. Talk to your children in every moment you can, but only when you feel really good. Talk to them constantly, but only when you feel good. And let none of your conversation to them be happening when you're not feeling good. Because you're, in essence, drugging them with resistance, slowing them down to your level of tolerance. This may be the best conversation relative to children and parents that we've ever had, you see. And when you are meditating, not medicating, when you are meditating and allowing your vibration to raise and then ready to be ready to be ready, timing will happen so that wonderful things will occur to you at wonderful moments in time. And you may be able to make some points that will make things go a little easier. But if it comes right down to it, this is the attitude that we would have if we were you, the parent, standing in your parent's shoes. This would be our message to anyone who is asking. I want my child to receive and give benefit wherever he is. I want the most that he can experience to be his experience. And I've learned from my close exposure to him that not only can I not slow him down, but I wouldn't if I could. In fact, every day of my life, I strive to keep up with him. I strive to keep up with his clarity, with his enthusiasm, with his love of life, with his insatiable thirst for knowing more. It feels to me that he is the teacher of me and I will never be one who slows him down. And maybe a teacher who is hearing that, maybe the right teacher who is hearing that, will recognize the depth and breadth and power of your message. And if it comes right down to it, in other words, if they say choose, in this case, medicate or leave, we would say we are joyful in our departure. what you do or say, a lot of attraction will bring to you those who predominantly match the person who you predominantly are.